chains to come. Though when the battle's won, for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Never fail me yet. you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move, when move the mountains. Again, you made a way when there was no way, and I believe I see you do it again. I see you do it again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. Lord, you're faithful to move in this place, faithful to move in this place. Lord, you're faithful to move our mountains, faithful to move it all the way. I see you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again.
And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates. Open up the gates. Make way before the king. Who can stop the Lord of mine? Hey, my God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. My God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin.
He's worthy. You are worthy of it all. Even when we don't see it, Lord, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Tell him, church. Say, you are worthy of it all, Jesus. You're so worthy. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. God, you deserve the glory. Your presence is the all I need. It's all I want. It's all I seek. And without it, without it, there's no me. Your presence is.
your son Jesus Christ no better gift than that so we exalt you today and every day God we pray for Pastor Scott as he comes up to give the word the bread of life God that you would breathe afresh on him open the eyes and the ears of the people listening today God we just thank you God for you are a mighty merciful God in Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good worship. Well, it's awesome when your worship leader can be gone to get worship like this, ain't it? That was great. Y'all did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. If you would, turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I've been doing a series, didn't know it was going to be a series, but it's ended up, this is my eighth message on identity crisis. 
and uh, we've talked about all kinds of different things, but there's an identity crisis, not just in the world, but there's an identity crisis in the church, and so we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus, amen? So the first seven messages that I preached was, was um, just good, good messages, but this one's going to be a little bit deeper. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going deep today. You see, normally we don't talk about crucifixion except for Easter. Crucifixion is not a pretty word. I mean, that's not, if you're talking to somebody, you want to say something pleasant to them, you don't say, man, I hope you get crucified today. Are y'all with me this morning? But I entitled the message Crucified with Christ, and I want us to look at this. And in, in Galatians chapter 2, Paul was talking to the church, and in verse 20, he says this. He says, and I'm reading out of the prison Bible. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, I don't live any longer. Christ lives in me. Now, we know that Paul wasn't physically crucified with Christ. Paul wasn't one of the thieves on the cross beside of Jesus. So what is Paul talking about when he says, I have been crucified with Christ? Cruci crucifixion, or the word crucify, means to be killed on a cross, to be put to death on a cross. It means to surrender totally to death on a cross. And Paul is sitting here saying, I have been crucified with Christ. And then he goes on, he says, nevertheless, not I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. In me. And the, the, the prison Bible says, I don't live any longer, Christ lives in me. So, so he's not talking about a, a physical getting on the cross type of deal, but he's talking about a spiritual, physical getting on the cross type of deal. He's saying, I don't live my life for myself anymore. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? We're we, we going to look in the inside today. This superficial stuff that a lot of people's talking about ain't cutting it. We got to look at the inside. Man, we, we got to examine some stuff today. And, and I guess my question to you today is, uh, are you crucifying yourself every day? Are you crucified with Christ? Identity. There's an identity crisis. Not many people want to identify with this. You're not going to hear this preached in a lot of places, I promise you. Because this is not a popular word. What do you mean, Pastor? we got to crucify ourselves. How many takers do I have in the house today? You want to crucify yourself? Y all, y all, now, y'all y'all going to have to fulfill my heart today. Because this, this message pierced my heart. I've been a Christian for over 34 years. And this message pierced my heart this week. God gave me this message Monday. And it's messed me up all week. It's all I could think about all week. Am I crucifying myself? He said, I crucify my flesh. He said, nevertheless, not I live, but Christ lives in me. The King James says, in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This says this, and I like this. He says, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. I don't live any longer. Christ lives in me. My faith in the Son of God helps me to live my life in my body. My faith in the Son of God helps me live my life in my body. He said, He loved me and He gave Himself for me. So you see, when we become born again, yeah, you can clap now because in a little while you're going to be pulling your toes in. You're going to be walking around like this. I walk around like this all week. Glenn, how many times I stumble over my flip-flops this week? That's what it was. I about fell in the hospital. Crucified. That's not a popular word. Don't sound good. It's not going to draw the crowd. But that's what happened to Jesus. He crucified himself. And Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. I don't live anymore. See, this is the problem in church today. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. The problem in the church today is we are selfish and self-centered. And we think everything's supposed to be about us. You notice I said us. I didn't say you and us. We do. We, we, we get to work. Hey, listen, we're going to work. We're going we're gonna to try to have the nice car. We're going to try to have the nice house. We're going to have our kids with the nice clothes. I mean, we got all those things. Is, is that stuff wrong? No, but if you're not crucifying your flesh every day and walking according to the way God's called you to walk, that's when it's wrong. 
Amen. He said, I crucify my flesh. So we got to put to death our flesh. I got some, uh, I, got a, I got a couple definitions I want to read. Cruci- crucify means to be put to death on a cross, to be tormented, to subdue completely. And then for us it means, and, and what Paul was talking about, he said, to render submission, totally surrender. Is your body totally surrendered? Paul was talking about the sinful lust, the sinful desires. He said, I have to kill my flesh every day. You know why? Because our flesh wants to sin every day. Are y'all with me? Okay, smile at me. Our flesh, our, our fleshly desires are to do wrong all the time. I don't care. I've been saved 34 years, and my fleshly desires, if I give in to my fleshly desires, I won't do what's right. Does anybody in here struggle with your flesh? Help me, Jesus. Thank you. I thought I needed to sit down. We struggle with the flesh. But praise God, he gave us the victory. We don't have to succumb to the flesh. We can walk in the spirit, and we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why I don't go out and sin every day. It's not because I'm afraid of this or afraid. I don't go out and sin every day because I love my Father, and I'm crucifying my flesh every day. There's things that I want to do that I'm not going to do because I know it won't please him. That's where you got to get. To where you're living your life the way he wants you to live and not the way you want to live. What does Jesus say about it? Woo! You might not like this as good as what I just talked about. Why don't you go to Matthew chapter 10. Let's look and see what Jesus said. How many of y'all really like what Jesus said? You're concerned about what Jesus said. And you know if Jesus said it, then you got to do it. Amen? I mean, you know, some people can skirt around the issues and say, well, Paul said that. You know, he was talking out of the flesh. Well, let's look and see what Jesus says about it. How we are supposed to live as Christians now. As Christians. And I want you to go to Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 36. Now, Jesus had brought his 12 disciples in. And he talked to them for a few minutes. He gave them a good pep talk. And then he sent them out. And he said, I want you to go to the children of Israel. I don't want you to go to anybody else. Don't go to the Samaritans or anybody else. He said, the children of Israel are like like sheep without a shepherd. He said, I want you to go to minister to them. Now, they ain't going to receive you, fellas, because they didn't receive me. You don't hear that preached much anymore either. He said, the, the servant, the, the, the student is not above the teacher. And if they said, my father was Beelzebub, or if they said, my father was the devil, what do you think they're going to think about you, fellas? Hallelujah. Jesus was telling them, boys, you're getting ready to face it now. I'm sending you out. Go two by two. He said, I want you to preach the gospel. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to open blind eyes. I want you to raise the dead. Freely you've been given, freely give out. Where's that in the church today? Y'all should be shouting. Because that means we got a long way to go. And a short time to get there. Burt Reynolds. Amen. Look at verse 36. Chapter 10, verse 3. Let's see what Jesus says. He said, a man's enemy will be in the members of his own family. He said, a man's enemy is going to be members of his own family. He was talking about the children of Israel because that was his elect. But he's also telling us today and telling them, look, your own family is going to disown you when you walk this thing out. I want to tell you something. If you're in here today and you're truly born again and you're truly walking the way God's told you to walk, everybody ain't going to like you. I, I know y'all don't believe this, but I really like people to like me. I don't think the Lord likes people to like me because of the way he has me to preach, but I really like people to like me. And, and be... Regardless of what you think, I really don't like to argue. But I will. Amen. And, and when, you, when you live for Christ, I'm talking about really live for Christ, people ain't going to like it. 
church people. He said your own family, you, a man's enemies will be the members of his own family. Y'all know that y'all are my family. You know where I've had the biggest, don't y'all look at me like that. You know where I've had the biggest fights ever? My family in the church. My church family. Amen. Look at your name and say, he ain't talking about me. He's talking about you. <laughs> now this is where the rubber meets the road right here. This, this is what got me. And some people's going to think I'm a heretic for saying this. But I'm going to preach this the way I believe the Holy Spirit gave, gave it to me. But it's tough. Listen to what he said. He said a man's enemy would be the members of his own family. And then he says this in verse 37. Y'all ready? He says, anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What? How dare Jesus say that about my mama? Y'all supposed to laugh there. It's supposed to be a joke. Jesus said, anyone who loves his mama or daddy or son and daughter more than you love me is not worthy of me. Or in other words, you will have no part of me. And I'm going to tell you, that took me back this week when he took me to that. Because, man, I love my wife, and I love my daughter, and I love my mom, and I love my dad. And I'm like, Lord, how do we separate this, and how do we figure this out? Because I know I love you, and I know I'm nothing without you, and, and I'll do anything you ask me to do, but how do, how do, I, how do I do this? You ever wondered that? Anybody in here ever wondered that? When Jesus says, if you love your mother, father, son, or daughter more than me, you'll have no part of me. You're not worthy of me. Let me tell you what he's saying. He's saying, if you pick them over me, you're not worthy of me. He's not saying that we can't love them. Matter of fact, the King James said it a little bit different. The King James uh, said, I forget how the King James said it. Who's got a King James Bible right here? Let me borrow it. So I done got all these people broke from carrying them things, but they still, man, I can't see that. What in the world? <laughs> I'm looking at the verse 1037. Y'all hang on for a minute. No, I'm good. Huh? Oh, here you go. Sorry, sweetie. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Maybe I need to read this one right here. Because there was a word in there that got me this morning. He says, anyone who loves his father and mother more than me. Doesn't say we're not supposed to love them at all. Doesn't say we're not supposed to show them our respect and our loyalty. But he says, if you love them more than me, if you pick them over me, y'all listen to me and listen to me good. Some of you are picking your children over God. That's not easy for me to say. I've been there to the place to where I had to make decisions that I didn't want to make. But I felt like God wanted me to make them. But some of y'all are, are lowering your standard because your kids don't like your standard. And you are submitting to your children's will instead of God's will. And for that, he says you're not worthy of him. Well, amen. Some of you are submitting your wills to your husband or your wife's will. And that's wrong. God says, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy of me. And what he means by that is, if you'll put them in front of me, put me on a back burner and put them up here, then you don't love me like you're supposed to and you're not worthy of me. Is that not kind of sobering 
for you. That's a sobering thought for me. Because to be honest with you, I've never felt Jesus physically. I've never hugged Jesus. I've never kissed Jesus. But I've hugged my daughter. And I have felt my daughter. And I have talked to my daughter. And I have loved my daughter and kissed my daughter. So how are you supposed to justify the? How are you supposed to weight them together? How, how does that rank out? And I believe he spoke to me as sure as I'm standing here. He said, if you put her before me, that's what I'm talking about. I'm supposed to love my daughter. I'm supposed to die for my daughter. Fight for my daughter. Whatever for my daughter. But I'm not. And my daughter tell you, I will not put her before God. She knows that. And my wife knows that. Regardless of what happens. I'm with Jesus. He's first. Now, he requires me to take care of them and to love them and to nurture them. And to tr- but when you allow someone else to put you into sin or to put you in a position where you're not hearing from God, then you're showing that person you love them more than you love God. That's what he's talking about. Amen. I don't know if that messes you up, but boy, that, that kind of messes me up. Listen to this. Y'all ready? And anyone who does not pick up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Preacher, you mean I got a cross? What are you talking about? I ain't never heard I you identify with Christ. If you're a Christian, you have a cross to bear. And it ain't the one you wear around your neck. There's a lot of people that wear them around their neck. That ain't the kind he's talking about. We all have a cross to bear. And the problem in the church is nobody's wanting to bear their cross. Now, I'm saying all this in love because I've been under conviction and the Lord's spanked me on some things this week. But I'm just telling you, there's nothing wrong with having desires. There's nothing wrong with wanting to do things and have fun and all this stuff. I mean, ever since we decided we was going to go fishing, I've, I've talked to Dwight a hundred times. He blowed my phone up. My bloaties are talking about fishing and Fred and, and Jacob. And I want to go fishing, but I love Jesus. And if he tells me not to go, then I ain't going. You see what I'm saying? I'm, try, I'm trying to make it as real as I can make it. I'm not some big theologian that spits out these big old words. I just tell you in redneck English. Look, we got to love Jesus more than anything else. Keep it simple. There's nothing wrong with having desires and wanting to do things and, 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 and all this. But when we put those things in front of Jesus, then that's where the problem is. And guys... Some of you are putting things in front of Jesus big time. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are not doing what you're called to do. You're not crucifying your flesh because it might make you study a little bit more. It might make you pray a little bit more. It might make you be a little bit more committed to the church or committed to this or committed to that. So you ain't doing it. So you're not really crucifying your flesh. Well, I didn't hear one amen on that. Oh, you're just working like crazy. You should have said, Hallelujah! Amen. Crucifying our flesh. Paul said, it's not only, no longer am I living, but Christ is living in me. And the life that I now live, what you're doing right now, how you're walking it right now. He said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How many of y'all living the way Jesus wants you to live? How many of y'all are doing what Jesus has called you to do? Amen. I mean, it's powerful. He said, anyone who does not pick up his cross, the cross is heavy. They knew what, they knew what it was all about. We don't see people walking up to Villa De La Rosa today uh, with a cross on their back, but they saw it all the time. They saw people carrying a cross up, getting beaten, and everything. They saw, they had a visual of this. They could see it better than we could. But I want you to understand a cross is a terrible thing. And he said to pick up your cross and follow him daily. And if you don't, you're not worthy of him. A cross is not a fun thing. 
Why does everybody think it's supposed to be um, daisies and roses being a Christian? It's not. You're going to have tough times. I listened to something this week that rocked me, man. And it was talking about a crushing. It said this generation don't want to be crushed. But the only way you can have the anointing is to be crushed. She, the, the girl said there's many, a gift will, will have many people to come, but the anointing is what separates you. Your gift to get you so far, I've said that before, your gift to get you so far, but your anointing will keep you there. And if you want to have fresh wine, I'm going to preach this message to you. I'm going to get it together. If you want to have fresh wine, you got to what? Crush the grapes. And we think we're supposed to just, man, if my tire blows out, that dang devil, he's a, blame everything on the devil. Every time everything happens, it's the devil, it's the devil. It's, no, it ain't. Sometimes God just wants to get your attention. Maybe you's going to have a wreck five more minutes down the road. Amen. We're supposed to be surrendered to him. Whatever he says, do, do. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, whether you like it or not, this is good preaching. We got to crucify our flesh. That ain't fun. It ain't, it ain't fun talking about it. It means to, to, to kill Listen to me. To put to death. How many of you have ever fasted for like three days? You ever fasted for three days? What's wrong with the rest of you? Oh, I'm really going to meddling now, ain't I? I start talking about food or money, boy. Y'all blow up like a big toad. Woo! Try fasting for something, and you see how bad your flesh screams. You always scream, I want Dunkin' Donuts, or I want Krispy Kreme. Boy, when you're on a diet, what does it do? I want Krispy Kreme, Glenna. I ain't going to tell nobody. <laughs> Our flesh fights against us. Our flesh is powerful. You know, there's so many people that are sick today just because of their mind, just worry. There's more people sick because of worry and stress than anything else. Our flesh is powerful. And Paul says, we've got to kill our flesh and the desires, the sinful desires of our flesh. Sinful desires of our flesh. That's what a Christian, that's what, that's what we're supposed to do. That's how we identify with Christ. And, and when I read stuff like this and I'm thinking, you know, this is talking to to me, this is the cream of the crop. This is the ones that's really got it. This is the ones that's sold out. This is the ones that you ain't got to chase after and pamper and baby and stick a patsy in their mouth all the time. This is, the, this is it, buddy. This is the ones that's ready to hang it up for Jesus. But what about all these other people that live like the dang devil ain't crucified nothing? They laid the cross out. And they think they're going to heaven. And Jesus said, you're not worthy of me. What about church people that's not willing to do anything that God tells you to do? Not willing to help, not willing to support, not willing to do nothing. How are you, how are you carrying your cross? How are you being a Christian? Oh, don't nobody shout me down there. This ain't a mean, this is just truth. You know, it's pretty sad when you got to apologize for what you preach when you're preaching truth. It's pretty sad. But y'all been around here long enough to know that I ain't going to apologize. I'm going to preach it. And if the shoe fits, wear it. If it don't, keep pressing. If the shoe fits, repent. Just like we all do. Repent. Hey, I got to straighten up. Y'all think, I, I tell y'all all the time, I got some visitors in here, but the Lord preaches the message to me before I give it to you. And that's why I'm like, why did they get mad when I preach this? The Lord done beat me with it for six days. Y'all get it one day. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If anyone finds his life, he will lose it. If anyone loses his life because of me, he will find it. What are you talking about, preacher? If he finds his life, you'd think if you find your life, you'd be happy. That's what people are saying. If I can just find out what I'm supposed to do. 
if I can just find my place where I fit in, I'll be. No, Jesus is saying, if you find that place to where you think you fit in and where you think you're supposed to be and you're out of my will, you just lost your life. You just lost out, man. Lost it all. And that's the problem in the church. I ain't talking about the world. In the church, people are not doing what God's called them to do. They're not serving. He said, if you don't be the greatest, be a servant. They're not serving. They're not faithful. Not the most. There's a lot of you that are. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just saying in general, that's the problem. And the reason it is because they ain't crucifying their flesh. Hallelujah. Now let's go over to uh, Matthew 16. It's going to get better. Let's never say it's going to get better. He's going to end on a good note. Matthew 16. And I want to go up to verse 22. Jesus again had been talking with his disciples. And he begins to tell them that he's going to suffer. He's going to have to go to Jerusalem. He's going to suffer. You know, they're going to, the elders are going to ridicule him. They're going to beat him. They're going to do all this stuff to him. And he says, I'm going to die. He tells him, I'm going to die. And Peter, who is one of my favorite, I love Peter. Peter says this. Peter took Jesus to one side and he began to scold him. Now, I can't even imagine Jesus scolding Peter. I've, I've had people, now don't take this wrong, but I've had people that don't even serve the Lord, don't even walk with the Lord. Don't, the only thing they know enough about the Bible is to be dangerous. Try to scold me on a scripture or something. And I know how my flesh rises up inside of me. Bertha, how would you do it last week? What did you do last week? And you said the spirit of slap come on you. The, the spirit of slap, jack slap, come on you. And you want to cold cock somebody because you're thinking your life is so messed up and you're trying to tell me I got a scripture wrong. You, you fell and bumped your dang head. And that's kind of the way Jesus was right here. Jesus is the son of God, never sinned. Is on a mission, God's plan. Jesus is going to fulfill it. The Holy Ghost is going to give him the power to do it. And Peter takes him aside and starts rebuking him. Help us, Lord. Peter took Jesus to one side and he began to scold him. He said, never, Lord. He said, this will never happen to you. Not one word that Jesus spoke didn't come true. And so Peter thinks he's going to change this. He goes on and Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are standing in my way. You do not have the mind, uh, you do not have in mind the things of God. Instead, you are thinking about human things. Can you imagine? Because, see, Peter loved Jesus. That's one thing. If you ever study Pe Peter, loved Jesus. Matter of fact, Peter, when they come to get Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, Peter's the one that jumped up, took the sword out, swung it, knocked Malcolm's servant's ear off, cut it off. He's ready to fight until he died. And Jesus looked at him and said, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Peter was ready to do it. There's a lot of people say they got your back. Peter had Jesus' back, but it wasn't the way he was supposed to have it. And Jesus told him, he said, get behind me, Satan. He said, you don't have in mind the things of God. You're not thinking about the things of God. Church, that's where we mess up. We look at things through the natural, and we're supposed to be looking at things through the supernatural. God's not a natural God. Y'all ain't getting this. God's not a natural God. God is a supernatural God. Therefore, he operates in the supernatural, not the natural. We're sitting back waiting for him to, to, to operate in the natural and do natural things. And God's sitting there saying, no, goofball. That's the way he talks to me. No, goofball. I'm going to operate in the supernatural. Get in line. Amen. We're sitting here trying to figure all these things out that we want God to do and how we want God to do it and got a little checklist on God do this, do this, do this, do this, then I'll do this, this. He's like, no, you do what I tell you to do and then I'll do this, 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 and this. Man, that's good preaching. We got to get it. We got to get it. Then he goes on and he says this. Y'all ready? Then Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said, if anyone wants to follow me, 
Every single one of you in here to call yourself a Christian, then you are a follower of Christ. Amen. You, you signed a spiritual dotted line. You said, God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I want to serve you. I want to make you Lord of my life. I want to follow you. Where you send me, I'll go. That's what you said when you come to this altar. I know them smiley face preachers didn't tell you that, but that's what you said. If you meant it from your heart, you said, this is not my life anymore. This is yours, Lord. See, some of you, please don't get mad at me, but some of you went to an altar thinking you was going to get a little feel-good thing and God was going to throw out the roses in front of you and you're going to walk out on air, walk on water, and everything's going to be good. Then you got slapped upside the head a couple times from the devil and you're looking back at God and blaming him. He's saying, no, I didn't tell you this is going to be a bed of roses. He didn't. Matter of fact, he said, in this world, you shall have tribulations. Some of y'all don't like it if you stump your toe. You think that's the devil busting your toe. I done said that a little while ago. Come on, man, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have tough times, but what are you going to do with them? You're going to run or you're going to stay? When you go out today, Vivian, I'm sure you did the bulletin out there. It's powerful. Walk outside the door and turn left and look at the Look at the, the, the bulletin board that Randall and Vivian made. It's awesome. I love it. I've seen that picture years ago, and it's one of my favorite sayings. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to go look. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. It's a big old stork, a stork, big bird. He swallowed a frog. He's got the frog in his mouth. The frog's leaning up this way and got his hands wrapped around the, the throat of that big bird. And he's saying, don't give up. That bird can't swallow him as long as that frog's choking his neck. The devil can't swallow you as long as you're choking his neck. As long as you're using the word, the devil can't swallow you. Don't give up. Then he said this. I'm going to read it again. Then Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said, If anyone wants to follow me, he must say no to himself. We don't like to do that. How many of y'all like to tell yourself no? Yourself wants to do something. You want to do something and you say, no, you can't do it. That's the way you do your kids. Oh, y'all don't like that. Glenna come to me one time. We, was, we, we, we always wanted to try to stay on the same page with Allison, but she was real smart and she knew how to play around and get you flipped around. You know what I'm saying. Amen. So we tried to stay on the same, and Allison would come and ask me to do something, and well, what she would really do is she'd come to the one she thought was going to say yes. Anybody else got kids like that? Okay, I was going to say, I know mine's not perfect, but she's smart. I mean, and so me and Glenna would talk about it, and Glenna come to me one time, and she was serious. She said, listen, you say no before you even think about it or pray about it. I'm like, she's right. But it's still no. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so how many people like to tell their self no? None of us. You know why? <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say, because you like yourself. Amen. We like ourselves. We take care of ourselves. But that's not what the Bible says to do. Are y'all are y'all listening? The church has come a long way, and they've the church has flipped it around. A lot of this stuff you're hearing is good stuff, man, powerful stuff, and all. But it don't teach you this stuff. They're not teaching you to deny yourself. They teach you to have fun, baby. Have fun, live it up. Live it up. Have fun. You're supposed to be happy. God wants you happy. I can't even sit and smile at the same time. And that's not scriptural. Sure, he wants us to have the joy of the Lord and stuff, but we're going to face stuff, man. We're going to go through stuff. I think that's what happens in the church sometimes. People come into church and they hear this fake gospel that's not really the truth, and then when they get beat up or something happens really bad and the devil just starts wearing them out, they give up and they say, I must not have got saved. I must not even be living right. 
I got any help in the house? Man. Then he goes on, he says this. If he wants to save his life, well, it, he goes on again for the second time. He said, he must pick up his cross and follow me. And then he says, if he wants to save his life, he will lose it. But if he loses his life for me, he will find it. And I started to stop there. I actually did stop there. I sent Kevin the scriptures and I stopped there. And as I was studying, when I come back from bringing the inmates, I went on down and I thought, how in the world was I getting ready to miss this verse right here? He said, what good is it if someone gains the whole world but loses his soul? What good is it if you got the fastest car, if you got the prettiest house, if your kids has got the best clothes, if you got the biggest big screen, got all, if what, what good is it if you got all that stuff and you hadn't crucified your flesh and you're not living for God and doing what God's called you to do and you die and go to hell, what good's all that stuff? You ain't going to be able to take it to the pawn shop and hawk it. Can I just be blunt with you? Most of the time, somebody's going to come in your house and take your stuff, watch your stuff, use your stuff, and have fun with your stuff that you don't even like. You ain't taking it with you. It ain't happening. So guys, we got, we got to think about this for a minute. How are you living your life? The last question that I wrote down was, are you carrying your cross? Or are you just worried about your family, your stuff, and you ain't really concerned about other stuff that's going outside these four walls even? Because Jesus told us, plain as day, if you love me, keep my commandments, do what I tell you to do. Amen? Cruci you you, you want to identify with Christ? You want to call yourself a Christian? Get on the cross. Do what? What did he just say? Did he say what I think he said? Can you believe Pastor Scott told us that we had to get on the cross? you believe that? God died for our, our cross. He took our cross. He did, but he said, if you don't carry yours, you ain't worth nothing. Uh-oh, I done got my wife and Karen whispering on the front row. I better quit. <laughs> I'm going to come over to this side. <laughs> Amen. This is serious, man. Because what happens in the church a lot of times is we get into a routine and we think we're okay. And God's called us to do all this other stuff as a church and as individuals. And we ain't doing none of it. And we think we're still okay. I don't, I don't see how we're okay with that, do y'all? I mean, you know, I know there's some great preachers out there preaching some great stuff. But I don't see some of that stuff they're preaching in this right here. I, I, I don't. I, I, I see the word... If we ain't doing what he tells us to do, and that's kind of bold, but if we ain't doing what he tells us to do, then we ain't worthy of him. Now, all of you are valuable. He loves all of you. He died for all of us, but there's certain things we got to do, and we got to serve him. We got to crucify our flesh daily. I die daily. He said, I crucify my flesh daily. I pick up my cross daily. I wanted to give you food for thought today. Think about the cross. Think about what you do and, and the desires that you have. And see if they line up with God's word. And if they don't line up with God's word, you got two choices. You have two choices. You can either stop doing what you ain't supposed to do and being selfish and not being committed or whatever it may be, whatever area in your life, you can stop and repent. And start doing what God's called you to do. Tonight we're going to talk about the game plan for life. The last thing we're going to talk about is how, how are we going to live our life out. We have one life. And I, I was thinking about this yesterday before I even seen, seen that video. I don't, I, I've done lived most of my life. 
Even if I live to be 80, I'll still live more life than I've got left. And some of you are older than me. Some of you are younger, but you're not promised tomorrow. How are you going to live your life? I mean, come on, guys. If you believe the Word of God, we're going to stand before God one day, and we're going to be judged, man. I mean, this, this is for real. This is for keeps. And so I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to encourage you, man, to, to get into your Word, to pray. Don't just be a, 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 a so-called Christian. Identify with Christ through your life, the way you live, the way you talk, the way you act, everything you do, you should identify with Christ. I don't care what you got, how many toys you got, and how everybody thinks about you. You got to get that right, church. We have to get that right. Amen. What does it profit a man or woman if they gain the whole world and lose their own soul? And what will a man exchange? For his own soul. Or what will a man give or trade for his own soul? Nothing. Your soul is the most valuable possession. Your soul is the most valuable possession. And if you lose that, you've lost everything. But listen to me. I want to give you something good to end on. When we line up with God's word. When we crucify our flesh. When we... When we submit to him, totally submit to him, and we do what he's asked us to do, and we serve the way he's asked us to serve, then he said, all these other things will be added unto you. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right standard, and then all these other things, all what other things, all these things that you want, all these things that you desire, all the things that he wants to give you will be added unto you. This ain't a get-rich-quick scheme. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your heart's desire. Raising up your children, training up your children the way they should go when they're old, they won't depart. You know, God bringing your children, hedging your children around. Some of your children are away. Keep, keep focused on Jesus. Keep surrendering yourself. Keep crucifying your flesh. God's word says that he'll draw them. Amen? Y'all stand with me. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question, and if you would, nobody moving around, but I want to ask you a serious question. Everybody stay focused. Look up here. If you're a Christian in this room, are you carrying your cross? Are you bearing your cross? Look at me. Individually, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the group now. I'm talking to each one individually. Are you doing what God has called you to do? Are you picking up your cross every day and following him? Or are you selfish and doing what you want to do? You're the only one that can answer that question. Amen. So I, I want you to think about this. Bow your heads with me for a minute. What do you have to do to line up with this word that I preach today? Because there were some things that I, I got under conviction about and I thought about. I'm a passionate person. I'm passionate about everything I do that I like to do. Let me rephrase that. Passionate. But how passionate are we in our walk with Christ? How passionate are you with your walk with Christ? Do you truly love Him? Have you truly surrendered to his will in your life because church listen to me if all of us in this room totally surrendered to the will of God they would not be an empty seat in this place because people would see Jesus on you so so he they would see the love of Jesus in you so much that they would want what you got and I'm talking to myself we got to get our priorities straight. Priorities should be living for the Lord, then our family, then our church. Some of us have got our priorities messed up. God first, your family second, your church, your job, then on, on down. If you're in this room this morning and you say, Pastor Scott, the Holy Spirit is convicting me because 
I know that I'm not crucifying my flesh every day. I'm, I'm allowing myself to fall into to, to desires that I shouldn't have. Now listen to me. It just, this just doesn't mean terrible, sinful things. I'm talking about just things that God don't want you to do. You know, they, they, there's some people in here that struggle with stuff that I struggled with when I first got saved that I don't struggle with anymore. But it, it's, it's a sinful desire nonetheless. What, whatever we struggle with, those, those things that the devil tries to bring against us, we got to fight against them. And I just want to I'm gonna throw a blanket statement out there. First of all, if you're in here and you're not saved, I beg you to give your life to Christ today. You can come on to this altar now. If you're not sure that you're saved, maybe something I said talking about the lifestyle that you're living and all this stuff, maybe, maybe that the Holy Spirit pricked your heart and you realize that, hey, you might have said a prayer a long time ago, but your life never changed, and you realize that you're not saved. If that's you, or if you've never asked the Lord to come into your heart, I want you to come forward. If you're backslidden in this place, if you used to serve the Lord, you, 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 know, you know what it is to serve the Lord. You know what it is to pray and read your Bible and be faithful in church, but you haven't been doing those things, then I want you to come. Nobody's going to bother you. We don't do that here. Nobody's going to bother you. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. But if you just want to come, this altar is a place to cast your care on the Lord because He cares for you. And then if you're in this place today and the Lord is convicting you of some things and you know there's some things that you're not crucifying your flesh, you know there's some things that you're supposed to be doing and things that you're not supposed to be doing and you've got to get this straight. I want you to come. I'm going to ask Laura to play and sing a verse of something and the altars are open. Altars are always open here, but the altars are open. The Holy Spirit is moving. I know that the Holy Spirit is convicting. There's no way you can preach a message like this without conviction coming. I know the devil's trying to distract and trying to get your mind on other things, but I want you to stay focused. Come on. This is time to get right with the Lord. This is time to let us deal with us. He dealt with me this week. This is time just to come and lay it before the Lord. As she sings just a verse or so, I want you to come and take this time to lay it all on the altar to the Lord. there just raise your hand and sing you are with worthy us. of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory you're worthy you're worthy of it all you are worthy of it all. 
quite right. If you can, at your seats or wherever, if you need to come to the altar, that's fine. But if you need help getting your priorities straight, then I want you to give that to the Lord because if we put our priorities before the Lord, that's another way that we're not worthy of Him. So if you've got, you got issues with your priorities, let's, let's try to get them lined up. In Jesus' name. up a little bit. I thank you for touching them and, and helping them to get them lined up. Those that have been struggling with crucifying their flesh, I pray that you minister to them. Help them this week. And, and those that have other issues, God, I pray in Jesus' name. about uh, ministry tonight, men's ministry. Even if you're visiting, please come with us, hang out with us. We'll be over in the educational building at 6 o'clock, and we'll have a good time. Love you guys.